What's up guys, Scanner Danner here. I said, what's up guys? I don't think I say that normally. I have my son Caleb behind the camera. Caleb, wanna come over here and say hi to everyone? Caleb is my, is my right hand man. Actually right now he's my left hand man. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Caleb. Yeah. Um, we are working on a 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe that does not start. I am actually excited to do this one for a couple reasons. One, uh, it's a no start. And we get to troubleshoot it. Two, I have a friend on Facebook. His name is Matthew Skundrich. And he had a 2008 Santa Fe just yesterday or the day before he posted about it. And it had uh, everything it needed, new ECM, a, a garage that put an ECM in it and had no spark, had good injection pulse good cam and crank signals, had everything it needed, no immobilizer issues. Some homework that Matt did is these models do not have an immobilizer. I guess only the Canadian models did. Um, but this, so far, I said, but, Sorry about the interruption there, guys. Um, I was talking about the immobilizer system and apparently the Canadian model cars are the only ones that have it in this year. So um, we're not too worried about that. But it looks like this may be similar in that I have no codes, the car doesn't start, and um, maybe this will help Matt too. That's what we're hoping for, twofold. One, we fix the car, and two, that we can answer this question that we have Matt and I and a whole bunch of you contributed in helping Matt with his um, problem child, we could call it. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you can see the VIN here for any of you that want to look at any of the data we're doing here and compare it to another vehicle. I thought it was important to start with the VIN number. So it is a 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe. You see the VIN right above that. It is a 2.7 liter V6. And then the first thing that I did off camera, I just ran the codes for the engine computer system. And you see we have no codes present. Uh, what I did not do is do a full system scan. Let's do that. And right now I do have a battery charger on this because we cranked it outside and it seemed a little bit weak. So I have a battery charger on this while we're doing our tests and by the way I have this on a 10 amp charge so nothing crazy see it we have a battery voltage low in the ABS system a variant coding error also it's in the anti-lock system I'm not overly concerned of that in the all-wheel drive there's a CAN bus code tire pressure monitor codes I'm not worried about those but nothing in my engine nothing in my transmission so we're just gonna attack this like regular going back to my engine management system I'm gonna go to data next what I want to see is if I have an RPM signal during cranking and maybe if we have some other cam or crank data PIDs that would be helpful all right, so I have some uh, camshaft stuff pulled up here, guys, but I'm not sure that it's gonna be very valuable for us. I'm just looking for numbers to be moving, some counts to be changing. Let's see. Almost started. Interesting, I got a minus 12 on the actual cam position on bank two compared to the desired. I definitely have an RPM signal. And you know, without being familiar with Hyundai's and whether or not that was normal or not during cranking, that bank two, as we're looking at right there, this cam position actual, I would think we want these to be exactly what the desired is, and in this case is zero, so there, that may indicate we have a timing belt issue. Um, it does crank kind of funny to me, and I noticed that when we were outside, Caleb and I were talking, I showed him a real quick timing belt test, and in fact, we can show you guys that. That's what we did outside. Let's go under the hood. We actually just took a couple of screws out of the one front timing cover and moved it out of the way, and it is spinning. I mean, just by the way it cranked, it sounded funny. 
Okay, cranking it. So you saw there's movement of this gear so that tells us the belt isn't broken. It does crank funny though. It, it has a funny sound to it. So let's find out what we're missing. Spark, fuel, compression. Okay, that's the direction we're going. All right, so to be clear about what I'm doing here, I don't always break out the lab scope for the first check. I mean, if I'm working outside, working in my backyard, the car doesn't start, I have no fault codes. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is put a fuel source into the intake, see if the car runs. I mean, it's real easy to do that. I would do that with you guys now, but the only fuel that I have is brake clean and brake clean isn't really meant to be burned. Um, I have read, I am no chemist, but I know when I've burned brake clean in the past that my eyes burn really bad, um, that it makes phosgene gas, which is basically World War I mustard gas. I'm talking to my son here too behind the camera. So certain chemicals aren't meant to be burned that's all I have available to me. I have no exhaust hose on this. I'm in the garage. I'm not using brake clean, just trying to be safe. So I'm gonna check the ignition coil firing and I'm gonna check the injector firing. That's the direction we're going. Again, this isn't necessarily the fastest way of doing things. It is a way and that's the method I'm choosing for this car. We'll start with the ignition coil. I'm using my Pico scope. It is the 4425 model and I am using a 20 to one attenuator that I put on here, which steps the voltage down. And uh, this has a 200 volt maximum input. And so what this attenuator does is it protects my scope from the high voltage surges of this ignition coil. Okay, so just one channel, single channel with my attenuator. My black lead will be going to battery ground for this test. And then my blue lead in this case will be my coil control signal. As far as my scaling goes, I need to tell my scope what I'm doing. I'm using my 20 to one attenuator. We'll put this on a minus 100 to 400 volt scale. And then I don't know circuitry here. I'm gonna assume that the red is my feed and the green is my control. I could be wrong on that. We will check them both. And I mentioned my friend Matt in the introduction, he had mentioned that the power feed for these coils, very similar to Chrysler, in that we need an RPM signal for the relay to energize to power up these coils. So I don't expect to see power here with the key on and we don't. Hey Pete, can you, can you crank this for me, buddy? As far as a time base goes, I want to pick a time base that is long enough to see multiple firing events. That's what I'm looking for here. An alternative way of doing this is to pull the coil. You guys that are do-it-yourselfers out there maybe don't have a lab scope yet. Um, you can unbolt the coil, pull it up, put an air gap, use a little inline spark tester. That's why I brought it in case I use this method. Hook this up to the coil and see if you have spark perfectly acceptable method. Yeah, go ahead and crank that, Pete. Okay, hang on. All right, I have no voltage signal at all, so I don't trust my scope yet. Let's make sure that it works. It does. I may not have been in there all the way. I'm on the red wire now, and I do have battery voltage on this one with the key on, on the red wire. Go ahead, crank it, Pete. Okay, there is, I was incorrect. The red wire is my control. We saw on the screen, we had these spikes. Let me increase my time base a little bit more. Something to consider when you increase your time base is sampling. Scope sampling needs to be accounted for. For more info on scope sampling and the basics of this Pico, I have some Pico scope basic videos I've shot. I'll link them in here so you guys can see them at another time. But I increased my sample rate. Pete, I need you to crank this one more time now. Say hi as you're walking past. How you doing? <laughs> it's Pete. Keep cranking, Pete. Wow, that was weird. All right, hold on a second. I wanna change this a little bit more. I'm gonna go 10 second. Turn this sample rate up. Go ahead and crank it again. Keep cranking, Pete, keep cranking. 
Keep cranking. Okay. I just, initially I saw some inconsistencies in this uh, waveform and I, I don't, those look good. Um, initial view looks good. The repetition is there. There's a downward looking spark line, but I don't care about that right now. Spark is there. That's the point with this. Um, Caleb, why don't you come over here and take a look at this waveform. So just on the single coil, we're looking at multiple firing events. So the spikes are just the collapse of the magnetic field of the primary of that ignition coil. So it makes a magnetic field, collapses, makes a big voltage spike on the screen. I'm not worried about detail for this. The only thing I'm worried about is, is it there? Right, all this is telling me is there is spark yeah. occurring on this vehicle. So right off the bat, for my friend Matt to help him, this is completely different than what he's dealing with. He's got no spark, no control on his Hyundai. This one has spark. I don't know why it's not starting yet, but we have spark. Okay. And so the detail of this isn't as critical. There's a lot that goes into this, but this is battery voltage here. This is where the driver closes and grounds it. This is where it lets go and makes a voltage spike. And this is secondary feedback. So stuff that Caleb's learning as he's editing my videos. All right, back behind that camera. So I would say this to begin with, uh, we have spark. Right? This vehicle should run. If I put a fuel source in this, this vehicle should run. This may just be a faulty fuel pump. It did try to start when we pulled it in here. All right, step two, injection pulse. All I'm gonna do now is move this lead over to the fuel injector. We're gonna do the same test. All right, so I'm taking this away from my ignition coil. I'm gonna back probe my fuel injector. I do not know which one is control and which one is feed offhand. This would be a power side fed ground side switched circuit. All right, so we'll run this. The only thing that I will change my scaling for, for the fuel injector is they're not gonna spike as high as an ignition coil. Most of our fuel injectors, the most you'll see is a 120 volt spike. So I don't need to be on a 400 volt scale. I can keep my attenuator on here. I can take it off for this fuel injector because again, this thing can handle a 200 volt input. Um, I don't need the attenuator, but I can leave it on too. I'm gonna drop this scale down to a um, minus 25 to 100 volt scale. Same 10 second sweep, same um, sample rate because it's a long time base. So we wanna make sure we're not losing our detail. Ready when you are. Okay, hang on. Stay there for one second, Ed. I believe I'm on the wrong wire. That was a steady voltage that you guys are looking at there. No pulsing. We're gonna move this over just to the other wire. I just move the pin over one. Okay, go ahead, crank that again, Ed. Okay, thank you. Come here, Caleb, I wanna show you this. Back up a screen. So the first screen, we're looking at in here would be battery voltage. So it, it actually, I don't know if I can draw, I don't know if this will let me draw on this. And if it will, if this lets me, it's gonna be one ugly drawing. Let's try it. Yes, so positive, right? Power goes into a coil of wire, right? And then this side would be a switch, a ground side switch. So this is a ground symbol here, okay? okay. What you're looking at on this wire, I'm connected right here actually i was connected on this side and so i'm reading this is battery voltage so see the 12.5 line right here mm -hmm. so 12 and a half volts so i'm reading battery voltage we cranked it over and you see this kind of noise or hash in there and a few volts you know not much we can even measure that so you take oh i can't with my ink there it's not important it's like a maybe a volt less than battery voltage the reason for that is the starter's cranking and it's drawing current from the system. So the battery voltage drop, but there's no control on that. To the rookie, you might say, hey, there's one. No, that's just a voltage spike. Next screen. So I, I looked at that, Caleb, and I said, I'm on the wrong wire. That's what that means to me mm -hmm. when, I see, when I see that. So I moved over to the other wire. That's where I took the scope lead out, reconnected it, right? Over yeah. here, battery voltage again. So now I am on this wire, okay? okay. And so I'm still reading battery voltage, which you would, right? 12 volts coming in over here, goes through a coil of wire, and then I have 12 volts coming out over here. 
All right, this is my chapter three material, right? Output solenoids, transistor drivers. It's not really a solenoid, it's an ignition coil, but same operation. 12 volts coming in, 12 volts coming out. Mm -hmm. Now I wanna see the computer pulse this signal, just like the ignition coil. And on my next screen, that's what we wanna see. Okay. So you see the, the same kind of noise is there when we're cranking as far as, you know, this is, this is battery, a battery voltage line here. This is a little bit of a drop in voltage from the starter. And these pulses right here are telling me that my fuel injector is firing over and over again. So what's happening is this circuit, I'll just zoom in on one of them now. This is like one of the awesome things about the Picos. It's zoom level, whoops, did not want to do that. Leave that there. I want to zoom on my waveform and that's what's happening there. Again, this is chapter three material in my classroom stuff and in my book. If you guys are interested, go to my website. It is scannerdanner.com. He's smiling, shameless plug for dad. All right, so look, battery voltage here, this line. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm measuring right here on this circuit yeah. with my scope. Reading battery voltage, so power's coming in, going through the coil, kind of waiting for a ground, right? Battery voltage. And then when the switch closes, which is a transistor, this side of the circuit, from here over, voltage is gonna drop to ground. Yeah. That's what you're looking at here. Straight line here to battery ground. Okay. So that's what causes the voltage drop. And then when the switch opens back up again, this would return back to 12, but the reason it doesn't return to 12 is the collapse of a magnetic field that built around the fuel injector when that was closed. And that's what makes the spike. Gotcha. Here's the point. We have spark, we have injection pulse. Okay. This car should run. Um, this would be where we're doing our backyard stuff. The car doesn't run, spray some fuel in there and now the car fires right up. That's what's gonna yeah. happen. Okay. I mean, unless, unless, unless we have a compression problem and I spray fuel in here and you know, it does crank kind of funny, but at this point we need a fuel source that's not gonna cause phosgene gas and make us fall over. Okay. So um, it's either that fuel source or I connect a fuel pressure gauge, which is the next step. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how difficult that's gonna be yet. So let me take a look. Okay. As a side note, Matt, I will get you your cam and crank signals for this car. Um, not our problem here on this one, but I will get them for you. Weird, we had that minus 12 degree cam pulse on bank two, uh, but I don't believe that's our issue here. I could be wrong. Maybe I have fuel. Maybe I pull a spark plug out and take a look and see if it's wet with fuel. That would be a method too. If it is wet with fuel, then I'm concerned about compression on this engine. But um, in light of keeping this simple, I, I, I really want a fuel source. I have never done this before. I don't know if it'll work. I mean, it should. I just don't know if the volume's there, you know, enough volume to start the car. You know, granted, this isn't ideal. If this had a Schrader valve on the fuel rail, I'd just connect a gauge, no problem, but there isn't one. And to connect a fuel pressure gauge to this is not gonna be easy, so. Fuel source it is. I wanna stay away from this mass airflow sensor. All right, so I'm going a gas, acetylene, in this air intake tube behind the mass airflow. I'm staying away from my mass airflow sensor. Just gotta be aware when you're spraying a fuel source into the intake, that's a hot wire mass airflow. You can damage that mass airflow. We don't want that. So let's just see if this like does anything at all. I'm ready when you are, Pete, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, still cranks funny. But guys, what this just confirmed, we have a fuel issue. And so at this point, I think to finish this video, now we're on a fuel pressure issue and I need to get a gauge connected to this and show you guys there's no fuel pressure on this. I have injection pulse, I have spark. 
in spite of it cranking funny, you saw it tried to run off of this. There's just not enough volume of this acetylene to make the car run. I gotta go get my fuel pressure gauge out of my truck and see uh, what we can do as far as adapting to this. So we're just debating on how to hook into this thing and uh, it's not looking too easy. And I was just asking Pete if these have an access cover. He thinks there is, so let's go look. Underneath that cover maybe. This one has a second part. That Where's the tank? Fuel tank in the back. This floor is soaking wet. Look at my knees from leaning on this. That's the spare tire back here, Pete. Uh, yeah, it's, it would be under the passenger seat if, if there's an access cover. You got to take the seat out. So it says there's two senders. Remove the second seat. Is that passenger or driver side? Yeah, that's passenger. that's what I'm looking at. All right. There's two fuel fuel senders. Uh, there is one of the there is two fuel senders. Yeah. He changed one. This guy did. He changed. No, one. on this no, car. This okay. This yeah, it's because it's split. So I didn't see the other side. So the drive shaft runs through the middle of it, and they right. run a probably run a transfer pump is my guess, I'm not totally sure. Just doing a little bit of homework, guys. Um, you do have to remove the passenger rear seat to gain access to this pump. Apparently it's a split tank. Drive shaft runs through the middle, two sending units, one pump, two pumps. I'm checking a wiring diagram not right now to answer that question for me. If it has two pumps or not. Oh wait, I printed these up too. Let's see what page to get on here. Second page. Fuel level sensor, fuel level. So two fuel level sensors. Okay, it's on the second page. Yeah, two. You can look at this too, Caleb, if you want. Yeah, I was looking at um, There's two uh, level sensors. So there's a level sensor here, and then there's a level sensor here, two of them, and then one pump. And it says inside fuel tank beneath rear seat so that's cool we can get to that yeah. power to that pump while we're here would be this blue wire it grounds on the frame so we'll, we'll do powers and ground checks as well while we're under here maybe a current measurement goes to 11 on the next page these mitchell diagrams that's not pin 11 that's just diagram so you can follow it it's this, oh, yeah, that's it. 11 there and then it goes to a fuel pump relay, mm -hmm. which is in the junction box, left rear of engine compartment. So we could do current measurements from up here, but because I can't adapt my fuel pressure gauge up here, we're gonna try to adapt it back there. And that's why we're going that direction. But if, if we weren't doing fuel pressure, we could take this fuel pump fuse out right here and do a current measurement right there to the pump. I, I need to see my pressure first. I'm hoping we can show that. So that's the plan. While those guys are pulling the seat, I guess we could spend the time here wisely. And I'm gonna find this fuel pump fuse. It says it's in the underhood box. So I'm hoping this is not a mirror image. I got burned recently with a mirror imaged fuse box. You guys that are on Scanner Dander Premium will know exactly what I'm talking about by the time you see this video. All right, so I'm looking for my fuel pump fuse. There it is, 16, and 16 on here is up there. So it's nice they give me bolt patterns here. So there's fuses here. This is, this looks like a mirror as well. There's a 30 amp battery fuse. Let's see. Engine start, ECU main. No, this would be this way. There's my cutouts. And there's the cutouts here. And then my bolt patterns. 
Yeah, two big relays, one, two, three, four, five, small ones, one, two, three, four, five. Fuse 16 is what I said, right? Yep. So that'd be that guy right there. It's a 15 amp fuse. And they give you a little fuse puller in some of these fuse boxes, which is nice. Right, there we go. So that'll be our guy. We're gonna connect a tool there and then we're gonna measure amperage on the Pico. So I'm using a little fuse loop here that uh, allows me to essentially break the circuit and then reinstall it and put the jaws of my amp clamp around it. So what I'm using is a, uh, an amp clamp connected to my Pico scope. You see I'm connecting this low amp probe to my Pico using channel A and then I'm setting my amp probe to a 20 amp setting. Then we're taking the jaws of the amp clamp that's gonna go around this tool. So all the current that's going into this circuit from the battery through this now to the fuel pump, I'll measure the current flow to my pump. And that'll get installed right where the fuse was in the first place. As far as direction of current flow, it doesn't matter if my pattern's upside down, we'll just flip it over. Just gonna connect the jaws of that. Zero my amp probe, hit that zero button. Let's go over to the scope. All right, so setting my scales up for this one. We're not on the attenuator anymore. I am setting this up on my 60 amp current clamp in the 20 amp mode. And all that does is scale it for me so I don't have to do the math, okay? Um, ten, we definitely don't need 10 seconds. We'll go two seconds, turn my sample rate down a little bit and let's go live ready when you are okay there's no current flow here just using a test light here guys i just want to make sure that i had no current there on that last shot just want to make sure that i have power here on this fuel pump circuit there shouldn't be power yes there should be power there that's my fuse to my pump so power there all the time, but there's not current flow yet because we're on the front side of the relay. So where we're measuring is right here, Caleb. See the fuse? That's hot all the time, so that goes right to the battery. There's no current flow on that circuit until the relay uh, closes, until this switch closes. Okay. So I have power there. The pump's not running right now, even though I have power there yeah. because that relay has the to relay. close. Right, and I haven't checked the relay yet but we can do that from the back. We can actually check it from up here too, but it's not necessary being that we're going in the back anyway. Yeah. We have power here. My connections are good. And the fact that we don't have current flow is telling us we have an open in our circuit. Yeah. And that open could be the pump relay itself or, or it could be the pump. And that would be checking that circuit we can do that check as soon as we get that seat out we can do that check down there okay we can either check it at the relay or we can check it there one more time i want to look at this pattern this is on a 20 amp i'm going to drop this down go down to a 10 amp circuit um can you crank that for me real quick if you don't mind okay boys that sound like a compression problem the way that thing cranks but there's nothing here, Caleb. This is, we should have an amperage somewhere between four and 10 amps of current. It should be up in here, right? Bouncing up and down. We got nothing. This would be, this would be one that if I was somewhere, Caleb, and, and I had this condition, I'd get under the car and I'd start beating on the tank and see if we can make it yeah. start up, which we may yeah, do. you did that with the one on uh, the Dakota. Probably, the it didn't start though. It didn't start. This one might. Again, right now, guys. Um, we're not looking for speed, right? What we're trying to do is develop as many testing methods as possible to deal with no-start diagnostics. That's what we're doing. Um, so if you guys are new and following me, you might be thinking, well, just go underneath and beat on the tank or you know, spray some fuel in the intake, see if it starts. You're not wrong, you're not wrong. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach methods, procedures. What happens when you spray a fuel source and it doesn't work? What happens when you beat on a fuel tank 
and it doesn't start, now what do you do? That's what we're doing. Okay, Caleb, so we um, addressed current flow here at the fuse. It's not there. I'm gonna get rid of this. We're gonna do a test on the pump relay itself, which is this guy, based on the box. It says fuel pump here, and you don't necessarily need to zoom on that, but it says pump. This is my pump relay. Fuel pump relays are all computer controlled. And so uh, a little relay lesson here for you guys. We have load and control. I don't know if you can zoom on those numbers, Caleb. All right, so 85 and 86 is the coil. That's what makes the magnetic field. And then 30 and 87, these two would be the load. So that's the, the switch that needs to close. And these two would be the coil. Computer controls the coil and the switch is what feeds the pump, okay? The tool I'm using, again, this can all be done without these tools. I get that, that uh, question a lot, you know, Dan, are you using all these expensive tools and I don't have them? And guys, if you watch what I'm doing, you can modify the test that I'm showing and you can do the same thing. Like we can use a paper clip and we can jump this circuit. But I have to warn you guys, if you use a paper clip, you jump the wrong pins on this relay and you crank the engine over, you're gonna cook the engine computer driver that controls the relay and it's never gonna work again. So you gotta be careful with your paper clips. Um, again, other tools you can use, but I have some Cadillac tools, if you wanna call it. Cadillac's probably not a good word for you guys that don't, aren't from the States. The Cadillac here, that's what we say when it's like the luxury line, right? It's the Cadillacs. Anyway, I have a tool that is made for this, testing relay circuitry not just the relay but the circuit itself you can see the the design of this i have the exact end that plugs in for the relay okay so put that aside we'll plug this in where the relay goes and with this particular tool i cannot get this wrong i can jump this circuit and not hurt anything oh it doesn't fit in there that sucks. It's too, fat. it's too fat for this connector. Can I get it in there? Oh, nice. I got it. Can you crank this for me real quick? Come over here, Caleb. Not yet. Watch this coil. This thing should light. If, if, the, if the coil is being energized by the engine computer, this thing should light. All it is is basically a test light between 85 and 86. That's all this is. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. What that tells you is the feed is good for the coil and so is the control. So the computer's controlling this relay for sure. Okay, next thing is what we can do, put our amp clamp on here. This is tied into 87 and 30 with this tool. And now, uh, let's see, the key is on right now? Just leave the key on. Okay, perfect. What we can do, load side stuff, this, these are the load side pins. One of these is going to the pump. So that's the pump feed. And then this would be the pump load, okay? And so if I flip the switch on, you see I can force the load to go to the pump, right? Pretty cool. And now that fuel pump should be running. And right now on my scope, I should have a current waveform because I'm measuring that right now. Let's just go take a peek over here. Hit start on this. Yeah, there's no current flow at all. So there's switch off. Uh, there is some. I have a little bit of current. Let's flip this amp clamp. We're getting a little bit of a spike. There is some current flow here, Caleb. Let's get a measurement there. Let's change our time base. I'm gonna go 20 seconds so we can see that. There's off, there's on, off, on. Let's pause that picture. Take a couple of measurements. Oh, I got my amp, amp clamp upside down again. Hold on. That's on. No, I don't. Okay, that's off and that is on. Pause that. So I have 169 milliamps. 100 milliamps is not enough, Caleb. That's way too much resistance to this pump. The spike though, is when I shut it off and I'm getting a two and a half amp spike on this circuit just an observation that's 
this, this is gonna need a pump. Uh, I have to make sure before I call it though that I have a good, good power back there because I have low amperage up here. So we could have a wiring problem in between or we could have a ground issue in the back too. So the feed wire going back to the pump could be an issue. So could the pump ground. We're gonna have to go in the back and check this. Um, but this should show me a waveform. Pretty sweet tool. Can do a little bit further diagnosis with this as well. Um, circuit off, again, that is pin 30. This would be 87 or vice versa. Sometimes they, they, they uh, reverse them. But what you can do, knowing circuit design, this goes to my pump. And what I can do is switch my test light to battery positive. And actually, if that pump has continuity, um, that should be lighting my test light right now. It's not even enough to light my test light. Um, so a little bit of discrepancy here, but that's telling me this pump has a connection issue. We have an open between here and the pump. Doesn't explain my 100 milliamps I saw on my lab scope, because that should light. But at this point in time, beating on the tank would not be a bad idea. Again, what do you do if the tank, beating on the tank doesn't work? That's what we're trying to accomplish here. We need to do some checks in the back. One of them can be, can be, let's go beat on the fuel tank. It's kind of fun. Um, turning this switch on, which is loading my circuit that is powering my fuel pump right now. If you're stuck somewhere and you need to beat on your tank because your fuel pump failed, you want somebody to crank it over, you need that circuit powered up, okay? In our case, we're bypassing the computer. I'm powering it right now. I'll get one more reading on my lab scope. We'll go back there and beat on it and then we'll do power and ground check and we'll be done. I have no amperage. Oh, I, I know what that was now, Caleb. The misleading part of this, I just measured my test light current draw. I have my test light, look, watch. Test light here, turn the switch. Wait, go back to battery ground, test light. That's my test light current I'm measuring on my screen. There is no amperage. Look, test light on, test light off, test light on. That's my test light current. That big spike is the initial surge of my test light, which is two and a half amps. A bulb for a, a, a test light has little resistance until you turn it on. Current flow rushes in, resistance changes with heat. So as the bulb glows, its resistance drops. That's what we're looking at on the screen. So when, as soon as I took my test light out, watch, take your test light out of the picture, there's no current on the circuit. We have an open, which matches the test. Take your test light, go to battery positive, find a ground. This should be finding a ground through the motor itself, right? That's this guy right here. That light should be lighting if the circuit's intact from here back. So here's the thing, right? The nice part about all of this fancy stuff that I'm doing right now, I do not need to connect a fuel pressure gauge to this car. It would be absolutely pointless for me to put a gauge on this because there's no current flow to this fuel pump. Does that make sense, Caleb? I'm telling you right now, I could spend a half an hour connecting a gauge to this and my fuel pressure is gonna be zero. Make sense? There's no current flow on this pump. So for you guys that need a visual on the fuel pressure, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. There's no reason for me to do it. This pump has an open, okay? Um, there's one other piece before we go back there I wanted to mention. Just wanna be clear on this open circuit test. So it'd be, it's this one. Taking my test light. I don't know if you guys probably can't see that in the shot. Is this in there? Yeah. Okay. So this, I'm saying that should light my test light. Test light's connected to battery positive. That goes to the pump. So your visual here is this. Here's your pump. This, this is the wire that I'm connected to. Is this one? On that tool. And my tool is connected here. Here's my little box. And I have my test light connected here. And it's connected to battery positive. Sorry for the poor drawing. Test light's connected to battery positive. Power goes in this way through the test light on its way down to the pump. And a pump, when it's stationary, there's no resistance. So that test light will find a ground 
through the positive brush of the motor, through the negative brush of the motor, and right to ground. That should be lighting my test light right now, and it is yeah. not. So what that tells me, without a doubt, I have an open between my tool and the pump, and the pump. or the pump itself, or the pump ground. That's it, that's all, that's it. That's all that's left. This is beat on the tank time, seriously. Totally. And I'll get the amp clamp set up again so we can see it. Let's measure my test light current draw one more time. Okay, that's test light current. Fuel pump switch is on. Let's go back there. We'll. Hey. Pete, which side is the fuel uh, sending you to on driver's side or passenger side? Well, the, the thing is passenger rear driver's side. What? It doesn't say, it doesn't tell what? us. The pump is on the driver's side. Uh-uh, it's just passenger. It's this one. This is blue and black, this wire here. So this is my pump. This is the pump housing itself right here. Don't know if that gave me any current. Let me go look. Nope. Nope. All right, so before we call this pump as being bad, we're gonna do two checks back here. Just a quick power and ground check on the pump itself. I'm just gonna unplug this connector. So heavy gauge, heavy gauge black and blue would be those two, which would be these top two pins. Now we can back probe this, do voltage measurements. I'm just gonna do this with my test light. I am not stuffing this test light into the female terminal. I'm putting it next to it, okay? Just putting it next to it. You never wanna front probe a connector. You spread the terminals apart. I don't want these two to touch, but right now this test light should light between the power and ground for the pump. And I gotta get this rigged up where I don't have to hold it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tool up front, my little switch, and that should turn, that should turn off whenever I flip my switch. Switch is off, switch on, oh, I'm sorry, switch off, switch on, switch off, switch on. All right guys, so just so we're clear, Yes, this test light doesn't draw the load that the tool or, or that the pump does, but this circuit was open. I proved we had an open circuit and I said our open is either between the um, relay and the pump, the pump itself or the pump ground. And so we're clear what I'm doing with my test light. I am on the pump power and ground. Okay. One, le one side of my test light is on ground. The other side's on power. I flip my switch on. How's my circuitry, Caleb? How's my power wire here? How's my ground wire from here? They're good, right? The only thing that's left is my pump circuit is open. This needs a fuel pump. I do not need to measure fuel pressure. This pump's not running. Again, nice thing about power and ground testing, current testing with a pump. You know, in a case like this where it's almost impossible to put a pressure gauge on it, knowing how to do this stuff is key. Guys, you could have done this whole job with a test light, uh, a multimeter, maybe a couple of paper clips, and uh, some carb clean. You can troubleshoot this system. You can follow the steps that I did with basic tools. Don't let the fancy equipment I'm using throw you off. It's not absolutely necessary in all cases. And in this, in this one, the fancy tools allow me to show you very clearly what our problem is here, uh, but they were not needed. If you guys are interested in any of the tools I'm using, you can find them in the description of this video. I'll link my tool page from my website, again, which is scannerdander.com, and I will link uh, also an Amazon page that I now have where I have a whole bunch of tools listed. Um, 
You'll also find some other relevant info in this video in the description, some other fuel pump videos I've done. And if you're interested in power and ground side switching, my, my chapter three material I mentioned, my book, um, I have a, another section on my website called Scanner Danner Premium where you guys can come into my classroom at Rosedale Technical College and essentially take my class remotely. So that info will be available also in this description. Uh, what else do we want to show you? I guess the last step of this, guys, I'm going to put a pump in this. I'm going to let you hear this car run. Um, one last piece, I think, for my son, so we're clear on this test light test I'm doing. Let's go back to the computer real quick. I want to review that for him and for you guys, and then we'll put a pump in this here this ain't run. Turn, switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off. My test light's lit back there. Okay, come over here, Caleb. I want to show you this. So this would be, this lower portion here is, is um, should be zero, it's not quite zero. And then up here is 282. So we're going from like, well we can put two cursors in there. Let's zoom on this. This is my test light. Yeah. So from here, we'll grab another cursor here. All right, that's showing you a uh, amperage difference of 161 milliamps. That's my test light current being measured from up here. Okay. I'm measuring my test light back there. Yeah. Okay. So my diagram, so we're clear on that. If you look, I said our open, remember our tool is up here. I have my, I have my amp probe uh, connected to the loop here. So I have my amp probe is here and that's where we're getting our measurement on the scope. Apologize for the crude picture. But instead of the pump being here, what I've done is I've installed my test light between these two wires. Oh, damn. Hold on. Hold on. It's horrible. All right, freak, you just have to bear with me, right? Test light is here between these two components. Okay. This is a ground, right? Yeah. And so for that test light to light, it needs a power, it needs a ground. Okay. And so how is, in my tool, I'm switching the tool on up here, sending power this way, yeah. down here, the test light is lighting because it has power on this yeah. side. And for it to light, it needs a ground on this side. Yes. We're done. We're done. Open circuit. My open circuit is in the tank right okay. there. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So remember again, our initial test was up here. Test light to battery positive up here. And we're putting power through my test light this way. The test light is looking for a ground down the circuit here. It should find a ground through the pump motor. The pump. So you're bypassing the I'm pump. bypassing the pump okay. now. Yep. That makes sense. Yep, and that's it. We're done. Our, we have an open in the pump. There's no other option but the pump itself. Okay. Cool. All right, let's put a pump in this. Ah, oh, I should have. I should have left that on. I'm going to turn this back on. We're waiting for a fuel pump right now, and I'm going to see if I can beat on this tank a little bit more and make this thing run. Because if I can, then I don't have to wait and prove to you guys it needed a pump. I can just beat on it and make the car run. That, that's my goal. Caleb and I just don't want to wait. We would love to put this pump in here now. Oh, by the way, you could do a resistance measurement right there if you wanted to. Totally not necessary for everything that we've already done. Let's see if I can get this. I don't want to break this tank pressure sensor or mess things up. Come on. Stay there and check my amperage. No. Nothing. No good. I don't know that it would help underneath. Nope, no sense in beating it any harder than that. No, we need a pump to prove it. All right, shut down, we'll get a pump. All right guys, the new pump was installed in between takes here. We were shooting some cam crank relationship videos using the Pico. If you guys are interested in that, 
There'll be some uh, links in this video as well, take you to that at least at some point in time. I'm not sure which one's gonna be uploaded first, but that's what these other leads here are. We were adapted to the engine computer, just fooling around while we we're waiting for the pump. So Pete put the pump in for me. He already has everything back together. I wanna revisit this test first. Remember we have the tool connected. We said that this side went to the pump with my test light to battery positive. You see, I find a ground, the test light lights. This is now gonna find a ground through the pump motor housing. So it's going from here down to the pump, through the positive brush, in the winding of the pump motor, into the negative brush on its way to ground. You see that's lit now, okay? That's one. Second thing, again, this bypasses the relay. So the switch, when I turn this switch on, that pump's gonna run. I also want you to see the current flow for that. So we'll get this back on the scope. We'll flip the switch and you can see on my laptop, we have a really nice waveform. And I'll go back to the pump and let you listen to it too while you guys are looking at that waveform. In any case, got a pretty nice looking waveform. Actually, you guys are looking at that now as you're looking at me. And this vehicle should start, so let's listen to it. And then we'll analyze that waveform. <laughs> Proper diagnosis, that's what it's all about. No parts change and no guesswork, right? Nice, easy troubleshooting job. Again, of course, other ways to do things. I'm teaching multiple ways. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you. And uh, make sure you watch these other videos that I link in here because I attack a fuel pump problem differently on every car. I mean, I may not have checked injection pulse and ignition coil control the way we did on this car or on another car. So last thing, let's look at this waveform, see what it looks like. I have a really long time base set right now, uh, which we don't need. Uh, cranking, it was helpful to see that, but let me drop this time base down, get a good picture of that waveform. This is a, about an eight amp average, pretty nice looking fuel pump current waveform. I'm gonna do one more piece here with this. I wanna catch the initial turn on of this, just cause I'm curious. Some of you guys will know why I wanna do this. Shut this car off. All right, I still have the pump running with my tool. Let's turn this off. I'm gonna set this up with a Longer time base again, we'll go back to one second, and then I'm gonna set a trigger on a single, and grab my trigger and we'll put it, put it there. Right now I should have a signal there. Oh, it's waiting to cross that trigger point, duh. Flip the switch, we'll see the initial turn on of this as well. Yeah, that buried my scale. So let's change this. Oh no, it didn't, we're good. Initial turn on amperage of this pump. 17 amps of current initial, just kind of some theory involved with fuel pumps and how they, how they produce resistance. Actually, when they spin, um, they create resistance. Counter electromotive force, when they're stationary, there's really no resistance, which is why our test light can light through the pump motor. But this is also useful for uh, troubleshooting these circuits whenever you have a pressure problem. 17 amps initial turn on with about, um, eh, yeah, it's about seven and a half amps of current with this pump. We can save this file for later viewing. If any of you guys want this Pico file, you can hit me up on my website, scannerdanner.com. Jump on the forum. You can email me on the support email in there. I have these files if you wanted to look at them. There's your pump waveform. We're done, faulty fuel pump. Hope you guys like that. Don't forget, again, look in the description of this video for relevant information. You can look me up on my website, scannerdanner.com. You can like me on Facebook too. I have a Scanner Danner page on Facebook and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again.